morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and today I thought I would answer a question from a student. He emailed me. It's Abel. He said, hi, Melissa. This is a very random question, but just emailing you about something that has been bothering me as a new trader. Abel did the class, I think, in June. I was researching about institutional returns, and the top hedge fund manager's returns is usually at or near 20% or less a year. 2016, for an example. And then he had a link. Isn't that terrible? Are they taking extremely low risk stocks, ETFs, et cetera? Because I, for example, am currently averaging about 30% plus a week. He's trading with me in the trading room, by the way. Why do you think is their return so low? Or do they not report their actual returns fully? I really have a hard time believing the top professionals at Wall Street is this low if I'm returning a much higher number. Am I missing something? Thanks, the best is able. Okay, all right, so let's answer Abel's one question there. Do they not report their actual returns fully? I doubt it. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not their accountant, but I highly doubt that, that funds do not report their earnings uh, fully. I believe that they probably do. They are under a lot of restrictions, uh, have some of the top professional accountants and CPAs in the world handling their books. I'm sure that they return, uh, report their returns in full. Uh, I don't know, obviously, but my guess would be yes, that they do. Uh, also, the fact that Abel's doing so well, you know, trading, uh, having a 30% return a week, you know, is because he's very, very focused, following me in the room, and he did my class, and, you know, he's, he's following the rules. He's following everything I taught him. Uh, it's not impossible to make money in the market, but I find a lot of day traders do, do not do well let alone make 30% a week. One of the reasons that Abel's been successful and extremely successful so quickly is that he does follow what I do in the room and taught. I think more day traders would have more success if they were able to do that overall in general. But there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that go together for someone to be successful individually as a day trader. These funds, for example, you know, it's, it's a group of people that are all working together. So you've got a lot of different minds uh, the challenge with day trading is you're doing it as yourself and as an individual. And if you don't have a mentor like me or someone calling the trades in the room like me, you're basically on your own out there in the market by yourself. When these, when these funds are averaging returns of 20%, that to me is phenomenal. That is not low at all in my mind. Day trading and investing are two very, very, very different things, okay? And also the time frame that these funds are in stocks for, the moves that they're looking for are, are, are far, far greater time span out than what we do as day traders. I mean, some trades were in and out in minutes. And we have to be very nimble. And again, we use stops. So it's, it's just like night and day to look at it. To, it's like comparing apples to oranges. You really can't compare. But I want to be clear that, you know, funds that are averaging 20% a year are doing extremely well. I mean, that's amazing. So say you have a fund that, you know, is investing $100 million. I'm just going to put that number out there. If their return is $20 million a year, that's phenomenal. So, you know, the risk that different funds take and the investments that they make vary. The choices that they make to take trades in the positions in certain stocks is, is just so different than what we do. My, my strategy, looking at stocks that are gapping, I'm looking for what the funds are doing with their money in, in live time, in the morning, pre-market, in the gap. Are they buying it? Are they selling it? Are they shorting it? But the funds are looking for much, much different reasons to decide to take positions in stocks on or off. So it's just, it's just completely, completely different. So it's, it, you just can't compare. But, but don't think at all that professionals on Wall Street are, are, are not doing well if they're returning 20%. They're doing extremely well because, you know, first of all, it's 20% of a huge megalodon massive number. And uh, I wouldn't even say that it's low risk necessarily. The, the percentage, when you look at it, of the amount of money that these funds risk compared to the percentage of amount of money that day traders risk, uh, they don't need to risk a huge percentage in order to get the returns that they need. It's and it's not necessary. I guess I guess that's the point. And the time frame that they're in trades, it's much much longer. 
in general, when you're deciding to get in a position in a stock, and this goes for anybody, individual, group, fund, whatever, if you choose to take a position in a stock, ETF, whatever, and hold it overnight for a long term, you're at more risk in general than you are if you're getting in something as a day trade. It's actually riskier to be in something for a long time than it is to be in something for a short time. Why? Because it is easier to predict where somebody's gonna go right now in the next moment, the next couple seconds, the next minute, the next five minutes, the next 10 minutes. I'm very good at doing that. But that is so much easier than predicting where something's gonna be one year from now, six months from now, five years out. Because any one of a number of things could happen. So do you understand? So. To say that they're taking low risk is not necessarily even the case because they're in these trades, in these stocks overnight, and that in and of itself is risky, okay? Also, they don't have to maneuver in and out of positions. They don't have the same ease to maneuver in and out of positions like we do. Like for example, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use the SPY as an example here. 817. We fell late on that day. Here, here's a 15 minute. And I'm just, I'm just using this example because I just wanna make a point. If you were long the spy in here and wanted to sell a huge, big, massive position of the spy into the day on the 17th, it's not like you can press a button with 2,000 shares and get out at, you know, I'm just gonna pick a number here to make my point. Um, at 245.34, which is the open of this bar, okay? So you see the volume in the bar, they're up in the square, the top on the left, okay? Which is a lot of volume, okay, for one bar. This is a 15 minute bar, but it's still one bar. You can't, you know, as an individual trader, you could sell your position and boom, press to get out with 2,000, 1,000, 500 shares, whatever, and get filled, probably at a very close to the price while the stock is still falling. So this is live time, the bar is moving, the stock's falling, you could probably get out, pretty close to where you press the button to exit. That's if you had if you had 3 million shares that you wanted to sell, the chances of you getting filled 3 million shares right at 245.34 are zero, okay? So do you understand? So it's like, it, it's just so, so different to compare. The reason that I talk about institutional money so much, and it is extremely important, is because if you're trading on the power side of that, it's easy as you as an individual to make money by getting in the moves. But the moves that we even get of these stocks are so small compared to the moves that that these funds are getting. And I'm and I'm gonna I'm using this chart as an example of spy because it's had a monster move. But we, we, if we had gone long the SPY, we would have been in and out in any one of the number of these green bars here and the bullish gap ups that happened here in the SPY, which there was a bunch of them. And I'm just going back to November last year, not quite a year. But there was quite a few. But if you were long the SPY in a fund, number one, you'd still be long it, okay? Market's still higher. Market still looks great, despite the fact we sold off the last two days. We have not changed trend here in the market. Um, but the point is that this is such so much of a bigger move. We would never have captured this whole move even if we traded every bullish gap all along the way up in here. Like the low of this bar down here, this was the election day, 212. High of the market was 249, I think, yeah. So almost a 40 point move is, is what you would have captured if you were in a fun long spy. So that's way different than when we get in a trade and we go long a bullish gap, like there was one here, where you could have captured on that day less than a buck, a dollar, till you get in and get the stop, get out, 50 cents, 75 cents a buck. So do you see? So they're, they're in for the big, big moves, longer time period, 20% return is amazing, and most funds are not doing that, by the way. It's only the top, 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 top places. Um, and you know, they definitely know what they're doing. The, the benefit of day trading as an individual is that you can flip your money over faster, quicker than if you had a huge amount of money. So y you want to be able to have the kind of, you know, returns that Abel's having. He was saying he's averaging 30% a week. But you know, you want to be able to flip it around, flip it around, flip it around every day or as many days as you get good trades because that's how you're gonna make money, that's how you're gonna build your account. 
day trading is about chunking it out. And I've always said that. It's not really about accumulating wealth. Now, over the course of several years, if you become a very good trader, you can accumulate wealth trading if you're taking large risk and big size and trades. And then you can also do options trades too, or overnight. But accumulating wealth really as an individual is through taking you know, positions in stocks for a period of a long time. Day trading is really actually very easy if you have a good system like mine because you are getting in and out very quickly. It's easy to predict where the move's gonna go fast. You have to get the direction right, which most people don't, but I do. And you can turn your money over very fast. And when you look at the percentage, it's really astronomical, okay? because you, you wouldn't get that in any other type of investment, and you wouldn't if you had a fund, but you wouldn't need to, that's the point. And overall, the moves you're getting are, are, are massive, so, so it's okay, all right? But I wouldn't say that the, the risk that they're taking is low at all. You know, if you had, like I said, a fund where you'd be risking a certain percentage, it's still a lot of money. So you can't, I don't, I don't, I don't generally talk about percentages when I, when I do anything, anything I do at all. I don't talk about percentages. I don't think it's, it's the right way to make decisions and it's too hard to make the comparisons. It's completely different. It's like night and day. You as a trader have a job to go in and pull money out of the market every day and you must do the stock in the right direction and you must be, you know, trade within a defined period of time and get in and get out. And that's your job. And over time, you can make more money as you risk more and you get better and, you're, and you hone the skill, which I definitely have done. And the longer that Abel trades with me, his skill will improve. So hopefully that answers Abel's questions. If anyone else has any questions, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Very interesting conversation. If you have any other questions, you can certainly email me too, and I will try to answer them via via email or via video like this. But I thought Abel's question was informative to help other people as well. Thanks everybody and have a great day.